Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Landscape North. Today, I have the pleasure of meeting with uh, Tara Galpin from Scott Wentworth Designs out of the beautiful city of Picton, Ontario, in Prince Edward County. County. Um, good morning, Tara. Good Welcome morning. to the show. Thank you. So, before we get started with the questions, maybe if you could just give a sort of quick overview of what you, who you are, and what you do. Yeah. So, um, thank you first for having me this morning. Um, I've been in landscape architecture for 19 years now, um, which is kind of crazy to say wow. how time goes by it so does. fast, it right? Um, and I've been with um, Scott Wentworth um, for the last seven years, okay. full time, yeah. and um, and then I worked about a year, year and a half on contract with okay. him. Right. So, and then previous to that, um, it was I worked in the states, oh, really? in Detroit, oh. and wow. Vegas, and New Orleans, wow. and things like that. So that's an interesting office. perspective that you can bring to, to the company, right? Yeah, so wow. different perspective, different projects, different climates projects yes. we're in, things like that as well. So yeah. And you look after the commercial design uh, portion here Correct. at Scotland. Okay. Yeah, so it's commercial design and um, commercial build, design build. Okay. And um, commercial, like just commercial build. So okay. we'll build other people's designs as well. Okay. So it's kind of a threefold okay. kind of a department. Cool. All right, well, we'll get right into the questions. Uh, first question is What trends do you see in landscape architecture? Um, so I think it's more, I would say more than trends. I think it's more movements. Okay. I see a lot of really cool movements. Um, one is um, really focusing on sustainability right. and sustainable practices. Um, and another, which is very exciting, not, I mean, we're in the position to be leaders in that as right. landscape architects, right? Um, so that's very exciting and just the awareness that's brought to it. And now it gives the awareness that I think is there now, um, with climate change and right. everybody, the, the conversations are being held and now it's, um, kind of, I see it up to us. Right. As landscape yeah, it brings you brings you more into the center of the now uh, to get center of the project to take the action right, right? and to try to get the implementation right. Um, and it's it's right now we're in a good position to lead that in right. the industry, which is exciting and that. And I think the other big movement that we're involved with is uh, come live outside. So that is a nonprofit okay. in the states and in Canada now. And it's coming on its 10 year anniversary wow. from the States. So, um, and it's really the initiative to get people outside, right? Right. It's to get people, um, kids outside, families outside, using their backyards, using their community spaces right. and things like that. Cool. So, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so on that, based on that, those trends and, and movements, where do you get your inspiration for your designs? Um, a lot of times um, from travel, okay. um, traveling to different places always inspires me a lot. Um, I think as well, we do a lot of um, public consultations, okay. a lot of workshops. Like this past weekend, um, Scott and I were up at the Ottawa Art Gallery oh, really? um, okay. and they had asked us to um, do a Sunday workshop for kids, oh, right? Um, on building, that aligned with the exhibit on building a playground. Oh, neat. Okay. So a lot of inspiration comes from those types of workshops, right? Okay. When you're dealing with kids and seeing things through their eyes and these crazy imaginations yeah. that they have, and um, it's like no holds barred. So that's really inspiring. Yeah, they're not, res not restricted <laughs> no, by design. It's anything. whatever they can think it's of. It's just right? whatever they can think of. Volcanoes with <laughs> jets, you know, putting out the fire and things that's like awesome. that. So that, yeah. So I gather a lot of inspiration and energy right. from those types of kind of situations. Too. Perfect. Um, so based on designs and new renovations, um, how has technology changed for you over your last 19 years? Um, incredibly. Um, I think when I started drafting, I was using in AutoCAD using a digitizer, which right. I'm sure most people don't know what that is. Um, so now it's, it's really, inspiring and exciting the change in technology um just with the amount of collaboration that you oh, would yeah. have okay. with other designers that you wouldn't have had previously right. by just having a skype call or having a, yeah. a video meeting um i find that there's a lot more of that now okay. on projects um where there's multiple people all over the place 
um, or can't get can only reach by phone, right? Right. Um, so I think there's a lot more communication, and sharing screens, sharing and screen, yeah, yeah, all of that yeah. stuff. That's that's really enhanced, I think, designs and the design process and collaboration. Yeah, that. It's exciting to see the technology that can be used for 3D. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah, um, absolutely. So you can actually show a client what it's going to look like real life. Yeah, in so the we're work. using yeah. some programs now this year that, you know, we have, we can do video fly-throughs wow. on projects, or if you're um, biking on a trail wow. from the aspect of a biker, huh. Like how they see the road and right. everything, the trail and what they're viewing versus at a walking pace is right. a little different, yeah. right? So things like that and being able to provide that kind of level for our clients and for the community right. and, and communication, sure. right? Um, it's pretty exciting. That's very cool. Um, so how do you see your role? I mean, obviously it's evolved over the years. How do you see your role in the design of an overall project from a, from a landscape architect standpoint? Um, so we try to get involved with, we try to partner with, um, clients and, um, like architects or developers and things like that, that really align with who we are right. as a company. Um, and a lot of times that sets us up for having those, being in the room with those initial conversations right. are starting, right? Like where are we placing the building? You know, how are we utilizing the site and things like that? So we're really fortunate that a lot of times we're in the room at those initial conversations. Has that, and kind has that of changed influence. over the years? Um, it, I wouldn't, I don't, not here at Wentworth, okay. I wouldn't say it has changed. I think it's always been kind of our, the philosophy here. Right. And kind of just who we partner with on projects and what that projects makes sense, yeah. we partner with. Yeah. And um, so we're, it's really nice to be in the room at that time instead of, um, now we do have projects that we're just, you know, at the last stage right. of things, um, and those are fine too, but yeah. it's um, just really, if we're in the room at the beginning of the project, and that's usually Scott or myself, then we can maybe see things from a different angle, right, right? or how we can utilize the site a little bit more. Right. Um, on rotate the direction of the building yeah to catch sunlight. more sun yeah. or um, anything like that um, where the best location for storm water management is sure. um, things like that um, we're trying to implement a lot more bioswales um, how we capture rainwater right. um, those are leading conversations now at that time like how are we going to capture and right. utilize the rainwater instead of just dumping it in the storm right, right? so having those being at the table to have those initial conversations with um, all the partners, right. uh, design partners, and the client in the room um, is really helpful because right. then it, everybody kind of it just forms that with the, the overall concept, right. right? Yeah, everybody's working on the same page and towards the same destination. Yeah. 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 Nice. yeah. Okay. And so, last question I have for you this morning is: um, you obviously have a tremendous amount of passion for for your industry and what you do. What would you say to someone who's a student who's looking at landscape architecture as a potential career? What would you? What advice would you give them? Um, so, from coming into the industry, not from not with a degree in landscape architecture, with right. a background in architecture, okay. with a degree in architecture, um, I would say the most important thing. <laughs> uh, one of the things is is really um, ask a lot of questions right, um, to your mentors and to your peers and to um, the people that are, you know, the college professors and right. things like that. I would also recommend a lot of field experience. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we have a program here where um, a lot of times if the graduate graduates from a landscape architecture program, they'll actually spend a couple of a season at least in right. the field on a crew yeah. to really understand um, the construction side of things. Sure. How things are going together, what um, different estimating practices, right? right. Um, how to organize a site, because then you can take a lot of those aspects into your design, oh, yeah, right? Okay. That makes sense, yeah. So you're kind of yeah. seeing things as the end product in mind right. before you even start. Yeah, so I mean that's a great combination though to have that to have access to the construction right. side of the business instead of just in an office trying to come up with a drawing to be able to understand what the contractors are going to go through to make that a lot more smoother process. Yeah, I think this, um, like Wentworth Landscapes is a 
great company that just is able to set you up that way. Right. And, and and we have that ability, Not whereas other design firms that I've worked in in the States didn't have that ability because they right. were strictly design firms, right? right. Um, so I guess just the experience, whether it be, you know, at a garden center, whether it be um, on a maintenance crew, yeah. that helps too. Sure. Um, one of the, just a summer in the field kind of um, to get you know, to understand construction practices. Right. So if you are, if you're working in the landscape construction industry, maybe, maybe design might be another avenue for you to further your career. Already. Exactly. Right. And we've had, I think, three or four people that okay. were on crews yeah. that actually went to back to school to get um, their design grade. Nice. Degree. So, and now they're designers. Nice. Right. Perfect. So they didn't go think about that avenue. They were just in the work construction, in the field, yeah. work in the yeah. field, and then decided that this is, you know, this is something I really want to, I'm more passionate about, right? Nice. So, cool. Yeah, so they're taking that aspect of it. So, but yeah, it's a great field to be in. Like, yeah. it's a great profession to be in, for Perfect. sure. So. And if people, if people want to reach out to you, whether it's clients or other designers, what's the best way to, to reach you via via email? Via or email, email is the best. Okay. Yeah. And then um, your email is right on the Scott Wentworth Landscape yep. website. Yep. Great. So then we you, you can just connect through there and then Perfect. email me. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate appreciate the feedback and and thanks for watching. And if you have any comments for Tara or for myself for for future episodes or for this one, please put them in the comments below. This will be uploaded to YouTube and LinkedIn later on today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Thank you.